I'm Nicholas Young, and I played John in the Tomorrow People uh, from about 19, well, when it first started, which I believe was 1973 uh, to 1979. Uh, John was uh, the guy that I think was supposed to have built the lab, having had some assistance from um, extraterrestrial beings, um, and was uh, uh, the first Tomorrow person. Um, and every other Tomorrow person who uh, became a Tomorrow person thereafter, um, sort of tuned into the lab um, by telepathy. And um, John was largely instrumental, I think, in most cases, um, in, in bringing them to the fold, so to speak, with the able assistance of Tim, who was the uh, computer played by Philip Gilbert. I suppose when Roger Price first wrote it, it was probably going to be just 13 episodes. It ended up being, I thought, 70, but I think the experts may tell you 66 or something, 68. Um, and of course, if you write a series about people, or from school children becoming tomorrow people, um, and all of a sudden you, you're, you're explaining to people that this is the next generation of mankind and that all children are eventually going to become tomorrow people, and if you've only got 13 episodes, that's fine, but uh, as the series developed, you became much more successful to everyone's surprise. Uh, of course, more and more tomorrow people came out of the woodwork, so to speak, and um, so starting off with four of us, I think it was four stars, maybe five, um, uh, all of a sudden, I mean, by episode 66, there were, um, well, there should have been hundreds of thousands, but of course, in fact, I suppose there were probably in total about 15 or 16 actors who played tomorrow people in the original series. So, sadly, at the end of uh, the six, high 60s number of episodes, uh, the show came to an end. We had a lot of fun making the program. I um, got on particularly well with Peter Vaughan Clark, um, who um, I used to send him up and he used to send me up, and we still do all these years later. Um, no, I mean, I think I think uh, one of the f funniest episodes when we first started was uh, doing a piece of film on the River Thames when we were supposed to blow up um, a boat part of the story. And because of the pyrotechnics, the police were present, the fire brigade and everything else. And we, we shot the scene and it was all done and dusted. Um, and then after the police and the fire brigade had retired, um, the director decided that perhaps the explosion wasn't big enough and perhaps we should have another go. So um, the special effects guy came up and started to dress it all again. Gave me slight cause for concern because he walked with a limp and he had three teeth. Um, but anyway, he uh, doubled or trebled the amount of explosives didn't mention to anybody that he'd done it, and this camera's rolled again, and there's just an enormous explosion. Uh, <laughs> I don't have to worry about his three teeth anymore after that, it's not any at all. Um, but of course, it caused terrible panic, because uh, this was long after the uh, supposed shooting, and fire brigade came racing, and ambulance, and police, and God knows who, um, because it looked like we'd blown some boat up in the tent. In fact, it's just a raft full of old junk, but um, <laughs> it was... Uh, an interesting introduction to the way things were going to be, I think. I think, what, I think the formula, the magic formula that Roger Price had was to internationalise it. This was not made at a time when foreign sales were that strong for any particular programme. And he had the idea, for whatever reason, of internationalising it by having um, people from different classes and different races uh, all mixed up in the same show. So when you came to sell it abroad, it had international appeal. Um, we had Elizabeth the Diary in the second series. Uh, we had Six High uh, in, I think, probably, I can't remember when, fourth or fifth series. Um, there was something that everybody could relate to. And what I'm discovering, having chatted to people today who've come all the way from Australia, Mexico, United States, Canada, um, is that the experience was a common one. They found the program very comforting. We used to rush home from school to see it. Um, and I think it particularly appealed to people who perhaps didn't quite fit in um, with their school friends because they could watch the program and identify with somebody who was different from the person who was different because they were a tomorrow person. And that, in a way, empowered uh, any child that watched the program with the, uh, the fantasy, if you like, or the inner belief that, yeah, I'm special. There's something about me that's different from everybody else. And it could be that they were a tomorrow person. So I think that's part of the appeal. Plus, as I say, internationalizing the program, which was a, a very clever move. I'm a theatrical agent, have been since 1982. 
Um, I started an agency specializing in representing actors and models for television commercials. Mm -hmm. And the theory was that I could do that as well as act. Um, and that worked fine for a year or two um, until, for various reasons, I decided to expand the business and acquired an acting agency and then shortly after another one. Uh, and it then became quite impossible. An actor does not want to see his agent promoting his own career or popping up on television or front centre. Um, so I took a, a conscious and very painful decision to give up acting um, in around 1983, 4, 5, something like that. But I was very pleased to be approached by um, Jason Hay Gallery from the Finnish when they decided they, well, when they bought the rights to um, the CD version of the Tomorrow People. And he asked me if I would like to resurrect the character of John. Um, and to cut a long story short, I said yes, and thoroughly enjoyed doing them. I think we made about 20. Um, they were great fun and fascinating to do, and it was uh, it just brought back memories and was thoroughly enjoyable, particularly the ones we did with the original cast members. Yeah. Well, they introduced um, some new Tomorrow people for the audio. Um, I'd say to people who've only heard the CDs, in their minds, they will be part of the team. Um, one or two, uh, I don't know how many exactly, but a few of the CDs were, uh, had the original cast members in. Mm -hmm. um, we did some with Sam Winner, with Elizabeth Diary, Mike Holloway, um, and obviously Peter Bourne Clark. Um, I can't remember how many of them, but for me those were the greatest fun because they were just like the old days. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But the, the two new tomorrow people are, are excellent. That was Helen and James. Um, I think they fit into the character very well because we don't have to be good looking to the original cast because it's all just sound only. Mm -hmm. Easy bit of casting, really. Um, we loved Philip Gilbert who played Tim dearly. Um, and it was a hard act to follow and hard to convince us that he was worthy uh, of, of the task. Um, but he proved to be so. He's done an excellent job and we were very happy.